Hi guys, today I've got something new. Um, I've been meaning to get an overlocker or a serger, as you might know it, uh, for some time. A little bit afraid of it because I've never used one, but I couldn't resist because this one went on sale for like half price recently. Um, if you're in Australia, I got it at Hobby So. Uh, it's the Singer SO235. I've seen a couple other unboxing videos of similar models, but not this exact one. So check it out, see if it might interest you as well. and the instruction manual. Foot pedal. And your accessories pack, which looks like a uh, screwdriver, tweezers, needles, and a few other bits. Okay, I've got it out of the box. And it's also come with four of these little, I believe they're called spool cone holders. And I'm not sure if you need those all the time or just for certain thread sizes. So I guess we'll figure it out as we go. So here it is. It's come with this little piece of fabric underneath uh, the presser foot where I can see they've done some sample stitching on it. And it does have thread preloaded in each of these in four different colors because it's color coded for when you thread it. Um, so I'm thinking that's to make it really easy the first time you can just join your new thread onto these and let it go through rather than having to thread it from scratch yourself. However, these new machines are color coded and it's supposed to be very easy to thread. So I don't know if you can see the thread, but they, they do have blue thread here, uh, green, red, and yellow that corresponds to these numbers. Um, one, two, three, and four and then the, everything's color coded the same. And I believe those numbers are the order in which you're meant to thread it if you were gonna do it from scratch. Um, I can see there's pieces of tape and I'm gonna have to open that up and see if there's any more that has to be on tape. So I'm gonna go and read the manual and we'll come back shortly and check it out. So we'll just go through the extras that come with the machine. Of course, you've got your foot controller over here. These are, in the book are actually called cone holders and they will go on the spool pins. And then you've got an accessory pack here, and that comes with two extra needles, a screwdriver, your tweezers, an Allen key that you'll use when you need to change or remove needles, and this little thing, which is called a two-thread overlock converter. So for some of the stitches, maybe where you don't use both needles or you don't use all the threads, you have to put this little piece in place. I'm just gonna be trying the standard four thread overlock stitch today, so I'm not gonna get into that, but that's what that's for if you do some of the other stitches. Okay, so just before we get started, you can see it comes with a little piece of fabric in the machine where they've already shown you a sample stitch. So to remove that, I'm gonna lift the presser foot with this little lever back here. Pull that out. And then I've got blue tape here. I'm just gonna cut these threads here. Okay, so I've just taken that sample out and we'll set that aside. And you can see the machine is already threaded. It comes just with a little bit of four different colors of thread already in there. So while we've got the machine this direction, I'm just gonna quickly go through the, the parts for you. The telescopic thread stand is this here. And you just pull it up all the way. And then when it doesn't go anymore, it says to turn it a little bit to lock it in place. And there you go, that's not moving. This is the spool stand and the spool pins and those little cone holders that it came with would go on there. Now I'm guessing that depends on what kind of thread you're gonna put on there. Maybe if you're using the, the standard cones, you need this on there, but if you were gonna put a normal thread spool on there, maybe you don't need them. I'm not entirely sure, but this here is your differential feed dial. You turn that to adjust the differential feed. This one is number five, your stitch length dial. And six is the upper cutter on off switch. So right now it's in the cutting position. If you wanted to turn that off, you could go like that. Uh, flatbed extension. So if you needed to remove this flatbed portion, maybe to put a sleeve on or something, just give it a pull. This here is your needle plate up here. 
And of course, this is your presser foot, like every standard sewing machine has. And that was the lever we used to lift that up and down in the back here. Uh, presser foot lifter, that's called. So from this side, we'll have a look at the front of the machine. These here are your tension dials. These two for the needles, and then that for the upper and lower looper. And for this machine, it says for most of the stitches, you just leave them on four. Depending on the particular stitch you're doing, um, you may need to change them. But what I like about this machine is all the settings that you would use for your basic four thread um, overlock stitch, you just use those, they've, they've got them marked what the normal setting is. So as long as you keep it on there, unless you need to change it, you should be good. Uh, and, and again, even this is marked nicely here. So you can see right from looking at this, this is your left needle tension. This one is your right needle tension. That is the upper looper tension dial. And that is the lower looper tension dial. So if you did need to change one particular one, it's pretty easy to see which one you need to adjust. Thread guides up at the top here. There are more inside, but these are the first set of thread guides. Of course, down here are the needles, and we've got two in front of my finger there. You can see those are the two left and right needle. More thread guides here. And these two are just for the needles. And then we're going to take this little handle here, push it all the way to the right, and open. And then you can see inside. And it's really nice because everything is color-coded. It comes pre-threaded, as you can see here, although you certainly can easily follow these diagrams if you needed to thread it yourself. Say the, the thread broke and you need to thread it over, you have to pull all the thread out and re-thread it. But it looks really easy, like I say. You can see the, the um, this one is color-coded yellow. So you know that thread's gonna come down here and then it just follows all the dots. There's a yellow dot, so it goes through there. There's a yellow dot, so then it goes through here. There's a yellow dot there, up through here and into there. All right, so the next one, uh, number 19, is your presser foot pressure adjustment knob. And that's this one here. And they've got a little plus and minus on either side. And the nice little symbol there that shows you that's the presser foot. Uh, you use that to adjust the pressure that is put on the pressure foot to suit your fabric. Stitch finger lever. It says to engage or disengage the stitch finger used to stabilize the fabric's edge when forming stitches, number 20. And that's this one here. It's normally an N for normal, which is really convenient. What I believe from videos I've seen is the R is for rolled hems. So most of the time you're gonna leave it on normal, uh, but the book has explanations for how to do every other kind of stitch and it'll tell you in there if you do need to change it, you just simply pull that back to R. But again, I'm going to leave it normal. 21, the cutting width lever. That's this one down here. You move it up or down to adjust the cutting or stitch width. And again, it's got the normal position marked for you so that if you want to return to normal, it's real easy. But if you need to, you can adjust that. I'm guessing that's going to be the width of the fabric that's getting cut off. So to close that door now, I'm just going to pull it up. And when you get it so far, it just sort of grabs on its own. So just be careful there. So now we're gonna go around the other side. All right, so on this side, we've got your hand wheel. Just like a standard sewing machine, it says you should only ever turn it toward you or counterclockwise. Power switch, uh, if it were plugged in, it says that would not only turn it on, on the machine, but also the LED light. And then the main socket plug, so that's where the foot controller is going to plug in. All right, I've got it threaded. I didn't show you the whole threading process because Singer has a really good video that shows you in detail how to thread it. It's not difficult. Um, I'll link to that below so you can watch that. The nice thing about it is it shows you how to thread from scratch, but also how to swap out the looper threads really easy without having to re-thread them, which essentially is you just snip it here, put your new thread on there, tie them together, turn your tensions down to nothing. You do have to take out the, the needle threads, uh, but then you just pull the thread straight through and it you don't have to rethread it, it's so nice. But I'll, I'll link to that video because it shows it in really good detail. So there's no point in me redoing that. But as you can see, I've got it all threaded and ready to give it a try. This is the first run, so fingers crossed. So I'm just gonna use that little sample piece that came with the machine. And I'll just put it in. <sighs> see what we get, here we go. Thank you. 
So look at that. Cut that piece off for me. I didn't go very straight, but that's all right. Uh, and here you see, look at that. Really nice seam. So there you go. I'm really happy with that. I didn't know, I, I mean, I kind of was a bit worried about getting a, a serger or overlocker. Um, I guess because I thought it was going to be tricky to, to set up or tricky to thread. Um, the way I did it was really quite easy. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that. So hopefully you'll see it in future projects now. Um, I tend to think I'm only going to use that four thread overlock, the main stitch, at least in the beginning, who knows. But the booklet does give you really clear directions on how to set you know everything up. So if you're going to do the four thread based on what type of fabric you have, do you use both needles? What settings do you use stitch with? All of that to cut her on. It, it's really simple. So you, you don't even have to guess at any of those. And as I said, it's got every other kind of stitch you can do with it as well. So the four thread overlock is the most common, uh, but it's got three thread overlock, both wide and narrow, three thread narrow edge, three thread flat lock, wide and narrow, three thread rolled edge, two thread over edge, wide and narrow, two thread wrapped overlock, wide and narrow, and two thread rolled edge. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of different styles you can do with it depending on your needs. That's really new to me, like I say. I probably will just be using that standard stitch for a while, but we'll see. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you decide if this machine is right for you. And um, like I said, it, I got it at a bargain price, so this was the time to do it for me. If you're considering it, I hope you'll uh, get some use out of this video. Thanks.